Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, U.S. Army Combat Veteran. It is August 2nd, 2022, and this is your daily Ukraine update, and we are going to be trying to break down just what is going on in Kyrgyzstan. Let's get into it. So first off, as you guys know, if you've been uh, watching my videos for any length of time, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense has asked that uh, reporting on operations in Kyrgyzstan uh not be publicly disclosed right i use public sources most of which appear to be respecting this embargo uh so i don't there's no verifiable information about changes to the front itself the only notable changes to the front are actually oddly enough down here near donetsk city and this has not been a very active front. It appears that the Russian forces have been focusing their offensive operations near Bakhmut, and the Ukrainian forces, of course, have been focusing their offensive operations near Kyrgyzstan. So it's strange to see that, for some reason, suddenly, Russian forces have seized this chunk of the H3 highway. You can see the progress that they've made here. And this could literally be an accident. Um where when you have very thinly spread forces, right, where both sides are kind of in a holding pattern, you can sometimes find that small changes in terrain, slight repositioning of forces, somebody finds just a dead spot in the coverage and is able to sneak out a little advance. This is obviously potentially relevant because this represents a significant highway that leads into Donetsk. So the Russians having seized it, uh can potentially portend something much uh, worse, maybe a larger offensive operation to seize this chunk of territory to the northwest of Donetsk City, which I think it has some adv advantages for the Russian forces, of course, because right now Donetsk is easily within artillery range. The entirety of the city uh, can be hit with Ukrainian artillery. Not even the HIMAR system, just standard uh, 155 artillery rounds. So they have some incentive to try to give the city a little bit of standoff distance. Obviously, if you want to have your breakaway republic, uh, you need a capital city. And Donetsk is the capital city of the Donbas Oblast. And so it, it, it really needs to, you know, not be under constant attack, right? Politically, it's just a bad look for your newly independent republic but the other noteworthy thing is that the russians have not done have made not really much progress i think these changes to the map here are just reflective of uh forces sort of settling into their best defensive positions um and limited advances right we've of course repeatedly discussed the fact that I think the Russians are going to want to close this gap in their line before pushing towards Bakhmut in kind of a frontal assault. I don't think there's much better options available to them, and those aren't a good option. But certainly, you cannot advance too much because forces moving towards Bakhmut will, of course, be too exposed. So what is interesting is that in the conflict update that uh, Ukraine has, you know, the Ukrainian military intelligence directorate, so, again, this is one side, and you should always take one side's reporting with a grain of salt, but it is they have been fairly reliable about what they do report. Um, they have said that Russian forces withdrew tactical airborne groups from Donetsk and redeployed them near Kyrgyzstan two weeks ago. Uh, and Russian forces may also be deploying elements of their eastern military district operating near Slovyansk to southern Ukraine, and might be even transferring large numbers of troops to Crimea in an effort to defend Kyrgyzstan or Zaporizhia Oblast from Ukrainian counteroffensives. Uh, UK Ministry of Defense sort of vetted and validated these reports, noting that Russian forces have seem to have identified Zaporizhia Oblast as vulnerable and in need of reinforcement. Uh, social media, of course, also vets this showing Russian forces moving equipment and personnel to Zaporia and Kyrgyzstan oblasts. So, all in all, this means Russia is withdrawing some troops, it appears, from Donetsk and Slovyansk uh, to reinforce the uh, risky potential breakthroughs by Ukrainian forces at Kyrgyzstan and Zaporia. Uh, we've talked for literally weeks uh, about the Ukrainian potential uh, efforts to launch an offensive or counteroffensive in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and 
it may finally be offering some breakthroughs. And the appeal isn't necessarily even that the Ukrainians need to liberate Kyrgyzstan. Um, though we have discussed that I think if there is a major push going on, it's probably happening uh, now, right? Because they've taken out one of the major resupply bridges to Kyrgyzstan, isolating Russian forces there. And usually that's going to be uh, coordinated with a hard push into Ukraine, into your defending forces, right? You want them to burn as many men and material as possible while it's as hard as possible for them to get reinforced. So this may be a sign that the Ukrainians are actually seizing territory and advancing, but it can be just as good that as we've seen uh, approximately two weeks ago, right, when Russian forces started being reallocated, that's when we saw Russia's gains go from big chunks of Lysychansk, Severodonetsk, right? It was like every day new villages were being seized, and now it's been sort of stalled, right? There has been not an ounce of progress. Even this extremely comically vulnerable area of Hirovka, uh, Hirovka, it hasn't been seized by Russian forces. And even to the south where they're focusing their efforts, where they're going all in, it's taken them weeks to seize this power plant and this reservoir. So if this is the maximum concentration of Russian forces, of Russian effort, uh, it hasn't been very considerable. So, again, it may be a sign that even if the Kyrgyzstan offensive doesn't necessarily produce considerable territorial gains, it still is diluting Russian combat power in a way that is extremely, extremely difficult, making it extremely difficult for them to, to launch concentrated, meaningful offensive operations. The one problem that you run into and this is a problem that the U.S. knows all too well, is when you're fighting on someone else's territory, the locals are just going to have the advantage in supply, right? Ukrainians, this war can take 10 years for the Ukrainians. They've already been at war for eight in the Donbas. So another couple of years is nothing to them. While Russia certainly is an adjacent country, it is not the same thing as fighting on their home turf, right? There will always be new Ukrainians, but at some point, Russians will get tired of their sons being sent to these uh, places outside of Russia to fight and die for no reason. Uh, so it means that even if Ukraine's victories are simply burning Russian men and material, it doesn't necessarily uh, require them right? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a it's a stalemate, right? And so what you may start to see, you may see Russian offensive operations grind to a complete standstill. You may also start to see some reversals. I'll be very curious in the next several weeks if Ukraine is willing to publicly acknowledge territories seized near Kyrgyzstan. We'll be very curious to see how close uh, they've gotten to the city itself and how... Uh, well defended or not well defended the city is by russian troops again kirsten's a tough place to launch an offensive because of course crimea is nearby uh and it can be easily relatively easily reinforced by russia uh but you know it's it's it, it, there's not really an easy place for Ukrainians to go to work. And this is probably as easy as you're going to get because, of course, you're protected on more or less three sides. You're not trying to create a gap. You're trying to push Ukrainian for you're trying to push Russian forces uh, along a single front, you know, push them out. So anyway, guys, that is all we had for today. Of course, as always, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you want to see some breakdowns of combat videos that are just a little too spicy for YouTube, of course, become a member of the Patreon. Patreon video is a couple of days late, but do not fear, patrons. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And of course, uh, I'm going to see you guys in the next one.